Hi, it's Nicole, and today I'm going to be doing a book review of Noir n'est pas mon métier. This is an essay collection putting together the testimony of 16, I think, different black French actresses. They talk about what led them to the screen and also about how they feel they fit in or don't with the current scene in French cinema. When I first picked it up, I think I'd been reading some essay collections to do with racial justice um, at the time and this one came up and since it's in French and it was really short, I thought it would be good to just pick it up and see what I thought about it. And I think I got about 40% of the way in before I just kind of put it aside. But then the Caesars, the 2020 Caesars came about and the Caesars are kind of like, um, the French equivalent of the Oscars. And while the Oscars have the hashtag of Oscar so white to highlight the problems there, the Caesars are still very homogenous and I think it is a big problem, especially when you look at the makeup of France itself and how you're not really seeing that reflected, as far as I can tell, in front of the camera, much less behind it. It was interesting to me to find out kind of secondhand because I don't really watch award shows and things like that, I just hear about things afterwards and maybe watch a few clips of anything that's interesting or noteworthy. Um, but there was a whole thing where Roman Polanski um, <laughs> was awarded for his career despite being a really horrible guy and I think that in itself was very problematic. And in response, Adele Hanel had walked out and after that a prominent feminist writer, Virginie Despont, uh, did an article in response to that. And then there was an article in response to that article talking about how Aisa Maiga, who is the editor of this book, don't worry it all comes back to the book, um, was actually kind of um, snubbed in that she put herself out there and confronted French cinema in a speech at the Caesars, talking about French cinema's problem with this lack of diversity. It was a very um, feminist and inclusive to minorities kind of speech and it was completely ignored and it was ignored by other French so-called feminists and I think it was seen as a moment for white feminism rather than for feminism on the whole because um, you had this black feminist saying something that was really important and not being supported in that event. Anyway, all of that happened and that renewed my interest in the book and in Aisa Maiga in particular. When I picked it back up I expected it to be kind of difficult to get through it all just because the last thing I remembered about reading the book was that it was getting to be a bit of a slog and I think because my interest was waning my comprehension was also waning because obviously French is not my first language and so I was expecting it to be sort of a struggle but I wanted to do it anyway. Yeah. But I was pleasantly surprised that it was actually really easy to get through. Um, I don't know why, and I kind of attribute it to one or two of the essays in the middle feeling a bit convoluted in their um, writing style, uh, and that's it's possibly that, but it's also possibly that I just wasn't um, at a good enough level to really get everything out of those particular essays and that style may have just been a way of writing that I'm so unfamiliar with that it was difficult for me to access the content. So I found it really enlightening and very saddening. Um, in fact, um, going back to Aisa Maiga's speech at the Caesars, so I watched a video on YouTube of the entire speech and then afterwards I looked through the comments and it was so disappointing, honestly. Um, it made me really sad to see a country that I um, have a soft spot for and um, all of these people, um, who not just white people as well, black people as well, who were just railing on her and saying that it was embarrassing that she would even say any of this stuff and it's kind of like when I was watching the speech, the whole room was in silence because they were embarrassed to have the mirror held up to them and for them to see what it all really looks like and yes, of course, they would rather ignore that and just get on with doing the same old thing but I think that that is a problem and I'm glad that she brought it up and I thought that there was no other better way to do that. So people saying things like, oh yeah, we all know that that's true but she shouldn't have, you know, done it that way, it was so rude and stuff, to me that seems very clearly like tone policing. And more than that, it feels like after all of these generations and generations of people saying nothing and waiting um, patiently for things to change or for people to be ready and all of that stuff, um, after all of those generations, what would it hurt for her to just 
say, you know, this is the situation and things need to change um, because nothing else has been working. The, the waiting patiently hasn't been working. So anyway, all, all that to say, um, I really admire what she did. Needless to say, I found her speech really important and necessary and moving. And her chapter in the book was one of my favorites as well. One thing I noticed when reading that was kind of bizarre to me was how many of the actresses mentioned America as almost a model that they wanted to aim for in terms of how it treated minorities in cinema. And <laughs> this was bizarre to me because I just... I mean, considering things like Oscars so white and just how representation is... Um, in America in it just it just didn't make sense to me but then I figured that must mean that French cinema must be really bad for this and they go on and on about how it's very stereotypical the kinds of roles that black people get and I think that it's probably true that at least in American cinema even if it's not where it maybe could slash should be there are a lot more roles, certainly now than used to be, that um, where you can see black actors and actresses um, getting interesting parts that are outside of the kind of um, stereotypical boxes that black people were supposed to fit into back in the day, and their um, the the roles that they're able to get are interesting and diverse compared to, I guess, the French um, cinema. Obviously there's still huge problems, for example, with um, films like Ghost in the Shell starring Scarlett Johansson, um, and there's a lot of erasure still and all sorts of problems, but I think the idea that even in America where there are so many glaring problems in how Hollywood um, portrays or erases minority groups, um, it's still better than in French cinema, and that is a real problem, in my opinion. One of the biggest, most positive takeaways that I have from this book now is that I've been introduced to at least 16 new actresses and lots of different films and directors, and I've put a few different films on my to-watch list, so I'm kind of excited about that. I don't know if there's going to be an English language version of this. Um, I think it would be great if there was one. However, I don't know if there's enough demand for something as niche in the English-speaking world as black French actresses, but oh, may maybe there is and maybe it will be translated. Or if you read in French and you have picked this up, let me know what you think and if you also thought it was weird the way that there was this um, comparison between American cinema that was in praise of American cinema despite the issues that American cinema does have with race. Anyway, um, hopefully you enjoyed this book review and got something out of it. If not, then um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to put down below a list of some of the films that I got from this book that I'm looking forward to eventually watching, um, so that even if you don't speak French and can't benefit from reading this book, you can at least get something out of this video, because I think all of these have either English subtitles or very likely are English dubbed or something like that. On the one hand I wanted to do a review for the book and also this and another French book are the only ones that I read in March so I want to talk about what I've read but it's not as accessible for English audiences so I want to make this video still be useful in some way so check out those um, films down below and let me know what you thought about them if you do decide to get around to watching them and I'll see you again next time. Bye!